The Goat House is back. The NFL trade deadline has passed. It's over, but now it's time to take a look at the big time players that could actually be traded in this upcoming offseason. Excited about this one. We'll highlight some landing spots here and there for some of these some of these players, but excited to break this down. Let's take a look at what I got. Starting with Christian Kirk, who absolutely needs to be on this list because he was pretty much a lock to be traded at the deadline, but he suffered an injury and that prevented it from happening. So one more year left on his deal after this. Could be looking for a new deal. The Jags could be... I don't know if they're going to go re, like straight, you know, full-on rebuild, like stage one. But they're going to retool. They're probably going to get new coaches in there, new staff, possibly new GMs. So it would make sense for the new group to trade Kirk, who does have some durability concerns, but is a really solid slot receiver. Um, you know, his value could end up being a third. I think talent-wise, he's a third, maybe at least. Probably a third given the durability concerns because one year left in his deal coming off an injury. Could he go for a fourth? It's absolutely possible. A fourth and something else. Uh, but yeah, like we said, he was pretty much a lock to go at the deadline before in injury. And he was pretty much a lock to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that would be the... T it is way too early to highlight landing spots for these types of guys. But if I had to, I, the Steelers would be that obvious one. Uh, because what was going on at the deadline. Trey Hendrickson, the Bengals' star pass rusher, leading the NFL in sacks right now. So you could say, would the Bengals actually trade him? Do they really want to trade him? And it's a good point. I mean, you, you back up to this past offseason, there was a short period where he wanted a new deal. And if he couldn't get a new deal, you know, possibly think about, you know, wanting to be traded. Uh, and the Bengals were sniffing around a little bit and, and kind of grant him a little bit permission to kind of look around a little bit, even though both sides kind of wanted him to really wanted him to be there. There was no new deal. He was back. He is balling right now, but going to have one more year left on his deal. He's going to want more money, a new deal, whether it's an extension, a raise, both together could be one or the other. So we could guarantee he's going to request that. And if the Bengals don't give it to him, they didn't want to give it to him during the offseason, they could very well do it now. You could predict that he will do it. They'll do it just because how important he is to them. But maybe they want to get younger at the position, but he's still balling like he's young. So if he doesn't get a new deal, he's probably going to request a trade, a new deal that he deserves too, by the way. If I had to say right now, they probably, the Bengals probably make sure of, to find a way to get him back, but it could pop up again this upcoming off season. And um, then, then things get interesting. I think his value would be, uh, you know, second round pick, probably two day, two picks, honestly, a second round pick and a third or a second and a fourth, um, you know, team would have to trade for him and give him a new deal. He's an aging veteran pass rusher, but he's still playing like he's in his prime. So he's a little bit of a tricky one. I mean, the production, the, the impact that he makes, like says first round pick, but no one's going to give that up. Uh, you know, again, super early to talk about landing spots. I, you know, there's a reason people bring up the Lions as, as a fit for Trey Hendrickson. I think that would make sense. It would be a good fit. Opposite Aiden Hutchinson. Hutchinson had, a, Hutchinson had a gruesome injury. Will he be? Will he be back ready to go? They're gonna need someone to kind of replace him, but then be there with him when he's back. I don't think Zadarius Smith is the answer long term. No way, in my opinion. So that uh, does seem like a good fit. A reason that they are brought up as a fit when it comes to Hendrickson. But you would think at this early stage, the Bengals would find ways to keep their star pass rusher. How about Debo Samuel? You you look back at this past NFL draft, and there was talks. There was talks about the Niners trading Debo. Some people thought it would happen. I know the Patriots got mentioned, but uh, it, it was a possibility. And at that time, the Niners and Ayuk was bring, being brought up. But at that time, they weren't really sure, you know, will we be able to extend Ayuk? Do we trade Debo? Then hey, we feel a little more comfortable giving out big money to a, to a big-time receiver. But they weren't really sure because Ayuk was almost like in a holdout. And it was still early in the offseason, you know, around draft time. So they pretty much had to keep Debo, even though not just because of that, because they like him as well, you know, just in case they had to trade Ayuk. And that almost seemed like what it was going to be. Now they paid Brandon Ayuk all that money, Debo, and he's hurt. But Debo is more of the guy with the durability concerns. So do they? And he's a guy that's probably going to want a new deal as it's starting to, it's getting closer to expiring. Uh, and they already spent all that money on Ayuk. They're going to have to spend money on Brock Purdy, don't forget. They're going to have to spend there and here and there, other spots. You know, they drafted a couple of receivers this past draft, don't forget. Pierce saw the big one in the first round, uh, but Cowing as well. 
So this, the more you start talking about this, the more realistic it seems because can they afford... It's really going to come down to if Debo wants a new deal, whether it's a raise or an extension or both. That's what it's going to come down to. And it was actually uh, recently, Debo said he thought he was getting traded just based on a phone call uh, at the deadline. So in the back of his mind, he knows it's possible, You know, dating back to middle of the offseason to now. So... That he's an interesting one. Uh, people right now are going to say, no, too important to the Niners. I agree he's too important, but reasons I explained, I think it's possible. I think he would go for a second-round pick, probably more because how much of a weapon he is. What teams will ask them ask themselves, will he be as good on our team? Again, he's not declining, but he's aging, has durability concerns. He's in such a perfect, perfect offense, a perfect system for his skill set. So teams will wonder, is this worth it for us? Uh, you could point out a bunch of teams that would love to have him. I like the Houston Texans. I mean, Stephon Diggs got an expiring deal as they reworked that. He's on. He's currently injured towards ACL. I don't know if they're going to be dying to get him back next year. Uh, you know, they're going to need another receiver. They got him for a reason. And then you have a lot of 49ers, ex 49ers staffers over there. Uh, and in, it would make a lot of sense in that system and what they're trying to do. So that's a team that actually stands out big time there when it comes to Debo. So a very intriguing one to watch uh, in the future here when we get to the offseason. DJ Moore is one that's being talked about already. People are It's why he's in this video, because people are talking about it. If I didn't put him in this video, people were like, what about DJ Moore? What about DJ Moore? I will say, if it was 0% chance, I wouldn't have put him in this video. So I think it's some sort of chance. It's just very small. I, I still think a little unlikely, but he seems to be very unhappy he seems to be a different person. Like he was a chill dude before, super nice guy, um, never complaining, even though he had rough quarterback situations in the past. And right now he's showing his frustration, and it's it's unacceptable, really, if I'm being honest. But he's unhappy with the current situation. It doesn't seem like he's getting along too much. It's not like they're fighting or anything like that, but not really getting along with Caleb Williams. And we know that's number one thing we know about the Bears. Caleb Williams is their guy. He is their franchise quarterback. They will do everything that takes for Caleb Williams to be their guy. So think about that first. If DJ Moore requests a trade or he doesn't like the situation, hey, trade me. Do some, I'm not, I don't know if I'm counting on that, but it's certainly possible given his situation. Or if the Bears go, we did not like what we saw from DJ Moore. You know, he wasn't as much of a factor, but mainly pouting and complaining and um, showing his emotions a little too much and during the game, during plays. So maybe the Bears, I know some coaches, some teams out there would be like, trade this guy. I don't want to put up with this. So it's certainly possible, but the Bears just extended him, right? They want DJ Moore to be part of the future. I think they'll be very stubborn if it comes to, even if he requests a trade. I think they would need a certain amount to trade, to maybe trade him. So it is a little tricky. And Keenan Allen's going to be gone after this year. Let's say you trade DJ Moore. You really, all you, all you have left is Roma Dunze. And then you're kind of going backwards in terms of Caleb Williams' weapons. So uh, I think the Bears will be a little stubborn, as they probably should be. We'll see how the rest, the rest of the year plays out. I think his value would be probably two day, two best, second, and a third. Uh, probably would make sense. But he's not doing much this year, and he's showing, you know, frustration. So maybe that, that'd be the issue. Like, I don't know. I don't think a team actually would give up a second and a third. Maybe a lone second, or maybe like a second and a fifth. And the Bears got to go. That is not really worth it to us, even though I do think that's close to appropriate value, close. Um, so, I, again, I think the Bears would be, rightfully so, a little stubborn when it comes to this one, but we had to talk about it here. Tyler Lockett is definitely one to watch. The Seattle Seahawks are one to watch, and you'll see what I mean about that as this video goes on. Uh, they got a new staff this year. They might just move on with their type of guys. They might move forward with DK Metcalf and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Those are the guys that are getting the most snaps for them right now, and JSN is really emerging. So uh, they might move on from Lockett, who is – his contract is come is nearing an end there, and he's a you know an aging veteran, so they may move on from him, and he may just be want to be a receiver two or possibly one, uh, maybe unlikely, but somewhere else, uh, you know, get a little bit more snaps possibly. I, he's not really complaining about it. I don't think he's really going to have a problem with it, but it would it would make sense that that could happen. They'd probably get a fourth round pick. He would go start somewhere else. 
um, you know, for, for our team. That, that one would make a lot of sense, and we're not done with the Seattle Seahawks just yet. Geno Smith is going to be a big, big one to watch here when it comes to this next offseason. It's all going to depend, well, the rest of this year. Uh, if Seattle can get him, Geno and Seattle can get something consistent going, start winning some football games that started well. He has some flashy, crazy good moments, and he has some really bad moments. He had three turnovers, three interceptions the last game they played against the Rams. But So it's going to depend on the rest of the season, but this staff, that the newer staff for Seattle didn't, pick Geno Smith and they traded for Sam Howell so could this staff want to go in a different direction the Howell direction or a new QB whether it's signing trading or drafting someone definitely possible maybe you know Geno they're not locked in with Geno he has one more year left on his deal he could be tradable and and teams could be desperate it's a weaker quarterback class all these quarterbacks are declining every week we see him as a couple of them that we really like you know Sanders is Probably stayed put to where he was going in this year, but Cam Ward has helped himself, and maybe Nussmeyer, even though he's hot and cold, has helped himself. Jackson Dart, I like, but there's no, there's no Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels type of group here uh, at all this year. So there's other teams, and the teams at the top will be set. They'll take Sanders, maybe Cam Ward will go up there, but there's gonna be teams picking even like five, six, seven, eight, and lower range that won't like the rookie quarterbacks and they may trade for a Geno Smith and you would go, who would want him? I mean, he still has some decent play. Um, again, some teams might be desperate. And if you look at his contract, there's only one more year left. So you're only, you're not locked in. You're only there for that. He's only there for that one more year next year. And it's going to cost just under 25 million, which is a lot of money. But for a quarterback, a veteran quarterback with experience, and he does have some good play under his belt, that's actually not a bad deal. So I look at teams like, it depends on what the draft order will be. But first, the court, the teams that might not like the draft, the, the draft's quarterbacks, where they sit in, in the draft, the Browns, the Raiders, the Titans, they could end up getting an earlier pick that can lock them in with Sanders or Ward, someone like that. But a team that definitely you have to highlight here is the Carolina Panthers. I know they might have a top two pick. They might be able to get Sanders. It just depends on what rookie quarter, what draft quarterbacks they like. Uh, but Dave Canales is there and his I know he was with Tampa last year but his Seattle Seahawks background where he kind of came up it could make some sense there with Geno Smith to bring him in then a, you know then attack the draft go about the draft it really depends on what picks these teams have and how these uh, draft prospects play the rest of the year so the value is a little tricky I'd say a third round pick uh, because he's a quarterback, he's a decent one. You're not taking on a ridiculous contract, believe it or not, so could it even be a second? I could see anywhere between a second and a fourth. He's a big one to watch. It's really going to start with Seattle, how Geno plays the rest of this year, but definitely a big-time one to watch there. I told you we had a few Seattle Seahawks here. You know, new staff this this last year. They could get rid of some of the guys that really, really weren't their own and just look to move in the direction they want to head. Draymond Jones, they brought in a couple years ago. It was actually the last offseason, uh, and he was really good for Denver, but he's been a little underwhelming. Still solid player, has some production getting after quarterback, but been pretty underwhelming. It feels like he's playing limited snaps. They really have a rotation, and they brought in other defensive linemen, so guys to take over in the future. Um, so they may not feel like they really want him that badly, or they need him, they can trade him, and I think he's a little more talented than the fifth-round pick, but um, yeah, he... he He's a little underwhelming, and he is pretty scheme dependent. So it they, it would probably be around a fifth round pick, maybe a fourth at best. Uh, that's definitely one I can see happening. Uh, just making uh, the Seahawks happy, clear some space, get a draft pick, and a new team really can help. Really, he's only played very well for the Denver Broncos. Uh, the Broncos replaced him with Zach Allen. He's played pretty well. I look at the Carolina Panthers again. It's really some of these guys I'm giving landing spots for way way too early landing spots. But if it stands out, it stands out. Carolina Panthers definitely could use more defensive linemen around Derek Brown with Genevion Clowney if he's still there. Uh, and, and Jones played under Ejiro Evero when he was with the Denver Broncos, so we know he fits that. That's actually where I thought he would end up in free agency last offseason uh, but he ended up with Seattle and I thought it was a good pickup and again he still can play it's just been a little underwhelming so definitely would be one to watch this upcoming offseason. How about Joey Bosa? There was some trade talks last offseason. They were talking about like trading him, cutting him. They end up cutting their receiver, moving on. Well, trading Keenan Allen and cutting Mike Williams. Uh, there's going to be some discussions with Joey Bosa this upcoming offseason. Because of his roster bonus, he has a ridiculous... Uh, contract or ridiculous cap hit, I should say. It's only one year left, but it's north of twenty-four million, and he's been a little under. He's very good, been a little underwhelming, maybe more than a little, even though good. 
uh, and does have durability concerns. So he's probably going to, it's weird. He's probably going to want a new deal in terms of an extension on top of the Chargers, maybe not wanting to pay him that new deal or the single year because of the bonus on top of the salary. So, and again, there was trade talks last off season. Um, so in the Chargers defense is balling right now. I mean, we'll see if Minter still there, if he's not, not getting a head coaching job this next off season, but he's a very good defensive coach. Harbaugh has these guys balling as well as the, as the leader of that team. And I, do they really need Bosa to be successful? They would love to have them for the right price, but they don't really need them. You know, as long as they kind of keep the band together and add some other guys, uh, because they're going to be pretty good at finding guys for bargain deals. that can play very well and fit their defense. So several reasons this could make some sense. Uh, he's not going to have a lot of value, even though he's a good player, because he does have one year deal. Might need an extension. Maybe, I, I could see him playing, playing on the one year. Uh, maybe he won't demand an extension, but it is pretty pricey. Um, so he won't go for probably as much as of his talent, what his talent says to say about a fourth round pick and a team that stands out. It's a little tricky because I'm going to say it. The San Francisco 49ers with his brother, Nick Bosa there, they are looking for another defensive end to help him out. Uh, I think the, they would need Joey to probably take a pay cut because they got to pay some other guys, uh, main guy Brock Purdy, uh, and I could see him if he want if it's if he has no choice but to play out the one year on his deal, he doesn't get an extension. And maybe he goes, I'll go play with my brother, and I, and I'll uh, we can do without that roster, most of that roster, a portion of that roster bonus, whatever. Uh, I could totally see it there. That'd be something if the Bosa brothers could play uh, together next year, but. Um, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but it's fun to take a look at. But a serious trade candidate for sure. It would be weird to see Cam Jordan playing anywhere else but New Orleans, and he could actually retire at any given time. He's coming in towards the end of his career. But the Saints could be going towards rebuild and to shed more money. They did a good job with Latimer. I really think they're going towards rebuild. So they could ship Jordan off. Maybe he plays one more year with a uh, contending team that needs a physical defensive end. You have teams that stand out, you have the Lions, Bengals and Niners top of my head but uh, and he probably would want a new deal I don't think an extension but he has one year left in his deal and it's kind of cheap kind of took a cheaper discount to stay home with the Saints so maybe he wants to retire there so he's a little bit of a tricky one but could see it for somewhat of a cheap cost can go help a contending team out but uh yeah, it would be a very interesting one if he if he, if he were to play somewhere else. It'd be uh, one of those ones that's kind of weird to see him in a different uniform, so we'll see. Jonathan Allen, I can definitely see the new staff doesn't really have ties to him. I know they like him. He was playing really good football before the injury. He is a really good football player that could you know, actually align in different spots across the defensive line. But uh, yeah, coming off the injury, he's probably going to want a new deal, an expiring deal. It's going to be an expiring deal going into next year, not right now an expiring deal. But um, I could definitely see him wanting a new deal deal and in Washington I could definitely see them rolling with Deron Payne and Johnny Newton like they are right now with the Allen injury so uh, I again definitely could see them moving on from him probably be worth like a third round pick a really talented I think talent wise maybe a second it's probably what he would go for he needs a new deal I'm definitely counting on him requesting a new deal but he is coming off the injury so that's the kind of the tough part there so we'll see but one to watch here solid defensive lineman maybe finding a new home as command the commanders maybe go forward with some of the younger talent that they uh, have there Jadeveon Clowney was mentioned at this trade deadline so it definitely most definitely can be brought up once again I know he's home in Carolina maybe he wants to stay there the Panthers Panthers could be a little more serious next year so they could want him they could use him but Definitely, um, you know, a veteran guy that could want to go to a contending place. So I could see trade talk starting up again doesn't necessarily mean it's a guarantee he'll be traded. But the Panthers should be in some sort of a rebuild. So does he fit that? So And two teams highlight right away. Going back to the Baltimore Ravens or going back with Mike, McDon Mike McDonald and the Seattle Seahawks. I definitely could see those two landing spots if traded among others. But it could be... As high as a third round pick or a fourth round pick plus some other, you know, fourth and a fifth, I think would make sense as well for Clowney. But a guy that was just brought up, just discussed at the trade deadline this year, so could be once again in the offseason. And the same thing here with Adam Thielen. There was some discussions at the deadline. He's a veteran guy. He's going to have one more year next year left on his contract. The Panthers are in a rebuild type process. So is Thielen part of that? You know, no, not re really. So he can go play out the last year, his last years in football, uh, 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 you know, as a receiver on a contending team. So I think it'd be a cheaper cost six round pick, but it's a little tricky because there were teams talking multiple teams talking to the Panthers about trading for him at the deadline. I know the Steelers uh, being one for sure. And they just couldn't reach a deal on compensation. You know, there was talks about that the Monday night before the Tuesday deadline. And they, 
So I would imagine they were offering something like this, and the Panthers wanted a little bit more because they want his veteran mind in there. That's really, and he's a good receiver, but uh, mainly that. So they probably wanted a fifth or maybe better. I think he'd be a little cheaper when it comes to the offseason, but of course that would be the only thing stopping it. Uh, from happening here with Adam Thielen but yeah so these are some big time players and of course there'll be more there'll be more surprise trades I mean every offseason there's these crazy trades that going in we think there's no way that team will trade that player but it ends up happening and a common theme on this video is a lot of guys that have one more year left on their deal not not this year but next year is the last year and a common theme with guy, big time guys that get traded are guys are getting near the players that are getting near an expiring deal they want a new contract and the teams go we rather just draft the new one. You know, we don't want to deal with that right now. We don't want to think about money right now as we approach the rest of the offseason. We got to make signings. We got to make draft picks. So it's a little hectic. That's a big reason, too. And maybe they don't think they want to dish out more money to a veteran player when they think they can replace them. So that is a reason a lot of these types of players do get dealt. So interesting thing to think about, even though we're at a way too early stage. But kind of a bonus video away from our weekly content picks and a lot more, and we'll have more of that. The bonus videos will include mock drafts going forward, playoff predictions as we near the playoffs. So really excited about what we have every week and what we're adding going forward. So join us, like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Much appreciate it. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.